What's up everyone, Tom here with another video. In today's video, we're talking about everything to do with the markets across the world right now, including our thoughts on the stock markets, crypto markets and commodities markets post the FOMC event. The Fed came out and they've announced three rate hikes. And what happened? The market made a double bottom. Day traders would have rejoiced at this. It was a very good pattern and it came off great support, especially on the S&P 500. So let's get into it. There's a lot to discuss and this video is sure to be a good one. Stay tuned guys, see you soon. All right, well, as we mentioned, this is our market recap for the markets close 15th of December, 2021. And the Fed has signaled that there is three rate hikes coming in 2022. Inflation battle begins. How big a story is this? Well, it looks like the market didn't care that much. There are some reasons why this type of thing happens. And we did talk about it partially this week. We talked about the idea that the market always goes into events with a little bit of fear in it. There was probably this expectation that we might see four times rate hikes rather than three times rate hikes. And look, that could be still the reality of 2022, but the market seemed to like the initial thought process. Yes, there's tapering. Yes, it's going at a certain rate. And it may not make sense to many new people out there why the market could have gone up off of this event. And it's why we always say don't necessarily try to interpret these bits of information. It's very difficult to figure out what Wall Street's going to do next. It's better to actually follow the price action, the technical analysis, and what we see on this channel and what we talk about on the daily here. And yeah, I mean, really, it's just like that. The Fed's main job was, of course, to really cushion this unemployment rate. They're now meeting what they would say is basically near or exceeding full employment by their own figures, which would be an unemployment rate of around 3.5%. That allows them then to start this taper. It allows them to start the rate hikes and it allows them to start discussing this point. But the Fed still, or the FOMC is still going to be really talking about this idea of cushioning the market through this economic crisis. And it's not in their best interest to crash the market. We always remember that. This particular one is in control. So when we have a news event that's partially in control, then it's less likely that it's going to be super negative. It still can be, but it's less likely it'll be. It's those black swan events that you need to really be careful for in the markets. We need to be able to cut through it. And that's why the price action can often show us the way. So what actually happened on the session before we get into the crypto and commodities discussion, the S&P 500 stocks, there was big movements, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, Tesla, all nice rebounds here. Nvidia, just phenomenal moves sometimes on this stock, 7.5% in terms of a full bounce. And the whole semiconductor index did very, very well for the session. If we actually look at the sectors themselves, you'll notice here the indices first off, here comes the announcement, an initial little shock, grab liquidity, and then bam, straight through the resistance that had formed on the day. We'll take a look at that later. Came back down, gave everyone a conservative entry, and then closed up quite a lot. There was, there was some really good gains here if you've been trading the session. You may not have got the low, but certainly if you got around this zone here or this zone here, I think you've made a very good day trading choice and you probably feel very comfortable with some of the decisions that you made. Now the event didn't mean that every single sector went up, semiconductors flew, so did technology, so did biotech, healthcare went well, utilities went well, but things like energy and even materials and finance did do okay, but nowhere near the other sectors. We also have big news coming as well. We've got the quadruple witching event. This event is basically when all of the options expire. It usually happens the third Friday of every quarter. So we see here we're in December and this is going to add some volatility into the market. So while we've moved up heavily, will we see a potential red day for the Thursday and then maybe a little bit of green for the Friday? That's something that a lot of people are now looking at. This was a massive sugar rush. The market went ballistic. It went straight up but now it's hit resistance. So that might've been a great day to trade. And this is why we trade sometimes after we see the news, we get that reactionary play, we can make a more informed decision. And of course we can then make better trade decisions in general. But we have increased trading volume coming in on the Thursday session. And of course, the potential of some intraday volatility. So day traders and scalpers will be very, very present in markets. Algorithms will be present through the Thursday, through the Friday session. Something to watch out for and keep in mind. 
Another question is, will we now see Santa coming to town? We won't stick on this because we've talked about it so much. Remember, the Santa rally is technically at these dates, not just yet, and it's usually going into that January period. That's the seasonal. We can see by the stats that it is a thing. It does tend to be green and it does tend to work out you know, a decent percentage of the time. Let's move over to the volatility in the markets. So the VIX came out, the VIX went straight down after the FOMC. We suspected that this might happen. Little bit of a rise coming into the event. It's not in the FOMC's best interest to crash the market or trash it. The market goes straight up. And of course, the fear comes straight out of the market at that point. So it's good to see the VIX coming back down, the fear index not really showing us that the market is scared coming into the rest of December. Let's get into the commodities discussion straight away as well. Let's talk about what's happening here with US oil and Brent. So Brent is very similar to this chart. Basically, previous resistance becomes support. What a great base here, guys. Fantastic little wicks here on the two hour. Another fantastic day trade should people have been taking it. You can really see that base formation happening over here. Wick rejections, a nice closure out above those previous wicks, a go signal for, for many, and that led on to the last six hours of trade being positive. So it does look good on the chart. It's made the first of a few things. Well, we're about to see a close hopefully above this trend line. And this trend line now has come from all the way over here. What date was that? November 9th. So this downward trend potentially getting beaten through here by the bulls. And if they get it above 73, well, we know the next stop 75. And after 75, well, we could really be looking at some very nice oil trading. So oil looking stellar, great support. And people that believed in this role reversal, and especially were trading the session, may have done quite well on this. If you've done well on US oil or Brent, let us know in the comments down below. I'd be interested to know how many people do like the Brent oil analysis because I'm never really too sure how many people really follow that one. Here is gold and typical of a manipulated metal, we see a huge sell off followed by a very nice return. My goodness, look at this. So there's the sell off, it goes bullish hammer, straight back up into the support. What a fake out. I mean, fake out ahead of the news, bam, bam, straight back. Reactionary people would have done better here than people that were trying to predict what was going to happen during the FOMC event and they've seen that follow through. So we still look for a few key levels of breakout resistance. We're still looking at that 1794 as a resistance level for the bulls to get back in control of gold. That's gonna be the full, okay, cool. We're, we're looking much better. And if we get through that 1810, 1811 area, well, we know that's where the major participation will come in. So it does look okay here for gold at this stage. And silver also had a big reversal on it. Came straight back down, took out so many people's stops. I mean, you can see how wafer thin this is. Look at that, 2141, pretty much the previous low over here in September, gets hit during the event, instantly reverses. And let's just put this in perspective of percentages. That is a 3.24% move on silver in a day up. That's a substantial amount. 2260 remains one of the key resistances here for this. And you want to see that follow through. Probably look for gold to continue to strengthen before silver will really come into its own. But it does look okay. It seems to have put maybe a base in here with this type of candle. We just need further follow through action. So while gold's running, silver hasn't shown us the extra little kick just yet. Move over to the stock market. What's going on there? Well, some good signs, some bad signs, and all in between. We'll start off here with Tesla. And you'll notice in the post market, it's actually up 1.53%. So let's talk about some of the elephants in the room. Do we have like a level that potentially Tesla, that was actually the breakdown, it's not gonna hit 900? Well, I would call this the no-go zone. It's pretty much where if you're selling, you're trying to sell it into 900. I've often cautioned against selling a stock like this. It can be very tough to sell such a hyper stock with such great sentiment behind it. Obviously, the retail herd loves picking this one up. And you're really looking more for your buy levels, for your bullish optimism and your key zone. So is this a little double bottom? I guess some people would see it as that. If you go down to something like a one hour chart or a 15 minute chart, that's where things get more exciting here. There's the resistance. You'll notice it's trying to breach through that. But I would say breach back above a thousand will be the big deal. So while the post market's 990, this can easily be sold off by the bears. We need to get back above a thousand. So 
that the Tesla bulls will feel happy about the situation. It remains really more of a day trading and scalping stock at this stage than a full on, okay, let's get into some swing trades because that big move that we saw that we certainly predicted as a community over here, we're in the sideways action for now. So double bottom, very possible. Breach of a thousand, a big deal. That's some of the stuff we're looking for. And bears, well, they're just trying to push it back down to that 900 level which is the previous resistance over here. Let's move over to Amazon. Amazon's starting to look much better as well. Nice couple of hours of trade here after the FOMC statement. After markets up 0.15%, we have a resistance around this 3550. This will be really putting in a double bottom and signal, I think to many, a very large strong move in Amazon. If we take a look at the daily, this daily has held well, especially the weekly, actually, if we look at the weekly. This weekly trend line has held for quite some time. So we've had supports, we've had some tests below it, but every time we've seen bullish action. And imagine if we close Friday like this, very strong looking candle, looking for the next week to be bullish. Again, Santa might be coming. Maybe we haven't been as naughty as everybody thought in the comment section this week, and he might be bringing us some Christmas gifts because this is a strong bullish hammer. Should it close like this come the Friday session, momentum follow through in the previous week, we can see good day trading opportunities, that type of thing occurs. And again, the trend line is holding, the 50 exponential moving average, which is the blue line here, is also holding. And that's exactly what you wanna see as a bull in this particular stock. 3550 for many people to get into the participation to the next 3700 zone, but good stuff coming in here from many of the FANG stocks, and in fact, many of the stocks in the stock market right now. Let's move over to the indices. We'll talk about IWM first. So the elephant in the room, has it resurfaced? It closed kind of like a really random amount. I mean, it closed straight on that previous high. Look at this. Didn't quite breach that. Look, it does look like, it kind of seems like it's formed the base. I mean, we've started forming very nice support. We know this 213, 212 is where buyers come back into IWM. If you wanna be more sure about this type of thing, you're probably looking for it to breach back past that 220. And the key, key zone for all bigger traders here is gonna be 226. At that point, huge double bottom, massive deal. I hope we're talking about it in the next couple of weeks because that would be a big one. Like imagine this, it breaches through, gets through all these moving averages, the 50 exponential, the 200 ex uh, simple moving average, and the 20 exponential, the red line here, we breach through and we see that positive action. Wouldn't that be phenomenal? And it's certainly possible here on IWM. So if you don't like this particular index for many valid reasons, then you can maybe set alerts for 226.50 and come back and make up your own decisions at that time. Why not? It's nothing, nothing stops you from setting alerts at key zones, and it certainly will be a massive double bottom if that occurs. Speaking of double bottoms, we've got the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ was a thing of beauty. If you were a day trader here, I'd be surprised if many people missed out on this one. Closure above after the FOMC statement, as long as you weren't trying to interpret the news, which would have definitely caused you to have analysis paralysis. How is it going up with three interest rate hikes? They're getting rid of the tapering, the sugar rush is over, all of these types of things may have come into your mind. Well, that's not how the market necessarily works. So the market has moved up since that point, completed the double bottom pattern and ended on a bit of a resistance. So the NASDAQ did really, really well for the session. It was the stellar one. It closed above, obviously moved above that high, that 16,000, and everything from that point forward was very, very bullish. We now have to grapple with the next level of resistance, and we know that's gonna be around that 16,400. You can see all the closures here. We have closures, closures, closures. 16.4 is the resistance. We probably expect a little bit of a pull up for the market, then it might sell off through the Thursday into the quadruple witching event, and then hopefully we get that breach of 16.4. Because if we breach this on something like the weekly, I believe it's gonna be a decent deal. We'll see a candle like this, which will be a huge, huge bullish kind of reversal here. You'll notice that massive wick length on the candle and signaling for new highs. And of course, what do we do when we get new highs? Well, we bring out our trend lines to the resistance side. So we'll bring out some of our trend lines that we've used recently, and we'll basically be looking for the next zone. I think this is where the S&P 500 really comes in, the SPY. 
It's been the best chart all week. We've known for two weeks now that this is the one that we should be watching in the market to get the best signals because it's just been so clean. We had that initial double bottom that played out in the 450. We gapped too high above. We find resistance at the previous peaks on the daily. We sell off, fill the gap ahead of the FOMC, double bottom base on the smaller time frames, and let it rip all the way back into the resistance. Actually pretty good trading if you could cut out the news and the fear and all of those types of things. And I think that's something that a lot of traders are probably starting to realize the more experience you have, the more you realize that actually if you didn't have an economic calendar, you might be like, oh, this is pretty easy in comparison to actually knowing what's going on. You know what they say, sometimes too much information or oh, is, is, is not really a good thing. <laughs> I think that is the case sometimes with economic news. It's not good to be ignorant, but if you're following price action, it's really showing you the way the market's interpreting it. Our interpretations will not be up there with the algorithms, with the, the really intense kind of AI. Remember, there's people that have programmed that with probably 160 plus IQs. And you might have that 160 plus IQ. I don't, but some people do out there, I'm sure. These guys are making huge, huge decisions based on so much data that we can't see. So price action really shows us the strength there. Here's the resistance. You can see how big a daily close above this 470 plus kind of area, 472, 473 will be. We probably expect a closure, a movement back at some point, and then the 480 is our target for the end of the year. That's the December target for the bulls. That's what they're looking for. Similar to the NASDAQ, maybe a little bit of a pull down through the Thursday, maybe even Friday session, and then hopefully a resumption of the trend. I find it hard to believe it'll smash straight through this after such a huge sugar rush, but you never know. The market does what it feels like. There'll be plenty of opportunities regardless, however you want to see it. Volume was also up on the day, signaling, of course, that Wall Street was prepared to buy this dip. And while volume dipped for a little while there, you'll notice there wasn't as much volume, it really increased in the last two trade days. Probably Wall Street trapping a lot of retail traders into the wrong move and then reversing straight on them. SPX, exact same thing, just giving you the prices here. So this is the 4,700 and of course, what, 2015 zone as the high, the double bottom. And I'll show you on the 15 minute how it looks. Again, very nice trading. The lows, the resistance, the closure out, the conservative entry, and bam, some nice profit there into the end of the day and into the end of the session. Another beneficiary of the whole stuff with the FOMC was actually the crypto market. Bitcoin went down, hit the support, and instantly bounced straight back up. Now, it hasn't done enough work yet. We've got this downward trend here for Bitcoin and we really wanna see that broken, but it has put in place the first signs of recovery. We've got the lows, we've got the peak, we've kind of closed above that on the two hour at least. And what we wanna know now is can we get through this downward trend? Because what we don't want is this to become a descending triangle, breach the low, and then we're going and talking about 42K and possibly like a 38K again. That's not what we want here, crypto fam. We, we want this thing up. Ideally, we have a good Christmas, not a bad Christmas on this. So we need to breach this first level. And then of course, where the big bulls come back in is 52K. We must remember this market is not the way it used to be. If you're a 17, 18, 19 Bitcoin trader or even before, we've got to remember synthetics are now in the market in a big degree. There's rich money in here now. So high net wealth individuals, hedge funds, big, big banks are now in the crypto markets and they're going to manipulate these markets more so than ever before. It's kind of fast becoming a gold and silver from that action. And it's all funny because it does always get comparisons with gold and silver, but I believe that's what's happening. If you agree with me, you can put it in the comments down below. We're seeing more manipulation due to the synthetics that are in the market. And that is what's causing so much volatility here in these crypto markets. We're not getting that really nice sustained bull run. We're seeing bull runs with bear busts that are light, that are actually bigger than usual. I mean, 40% bear busts weren't really a thing. It was more like that 20, 30. Now we're getting a little bit too far away. And I think the biggest sign really that we're in this type of market is probably some of the Wyckoff events that we've seen over the last trading year. That's showing us 
that the markets are ready to cause max pain and I doubt the whales are the ones that's doing that. It's, it's the big guys out there. Look for a break of this and of course the bigger break of 52K will be key and the bears, well, you know where they need it. They want it under 46K. You get underneath there, we'll all have sad faces for Christmas. That won't be good. We'll have to put our money to hopefully buy some more or do whatever if we receive it because it won't be very nice. Bitcoin shorts, okay, yes, we've moved straight back down here. It's not the whales that are doing any of this manipulation at this stage. They pushed it up. We saw that kind of fall on Bitcoin markets and now they've been reallocating, you would think, back into the asset. So that's still remaining quite low. Another one is Ethereum. Of course, we look at this. This is the second index, if you have, of crypto. Back above 4,000, that's a good sign. Another downward trend here. We need to breach that to show the first signs of recovery and we'll be watching that as much as possible. Please do remember there's a whole bunch of news coming out as well. We do still have big news and while it might not be to towards the US stock markets, we've got so much policies out of Europe on Thursday, December the 16th. These are all New York time. So of course, get your own calendar and set it all up. But there's so much monetary policy coming out of uh, Britain, coming out of the Euro, coming out of all sorts of things. And Friday brings the quadruple witching. So we still expect volatility. We still expect some form of opportunity in the markets. And while everything's looking good and maybe Santa is going to come, we still need that break of the top resistance to really proof that this market's ready to go to the next level. Possibly that monthly R2 pivot at 4,800 for the S&P. Thanks so much, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Have a great day. Catch up.